I think the intention of the movie, movie was to make literally the, the worst thing and then just put it out. But yeah, it this was major, this was the, the literal the It's like the aristocrats of the movies. Yeah. This this yeah. was uh, these these guys got all these different um, donors, uh, uh, not donors, but uh, supporters to give them money to produce a show. And, and the thing is, if, if the show is a hit, then they have to pay a percent to all these supporters, right? But what they did was they, they got so many different supporters to support them um, that uh, they wanted to create a show that was going to be an absolute flop so they wouldn't have to pay anything to all of these supporters. So basically, they're making all their money as a scam from all of these different, you know, producers, basically, right? Well, the dar darndest thing is that it was such a bad thing, it was absolutely hysterical, and so it became a hit, and so they were bankrupt, because they... <laughs> so, so it's a comedy. Uh, and, and, and this was intended, of course, to be so bad. But you can see the reactions of some of the people in the audience were... Well, of course, that's, of course, that's part of the movie. So it's not like a real audience watching this, et cetera. Um, but so, I suppose though I shouldn't have just started all of a sudden singing Springtime for Hitler in Germany. <laughs> if you're not familiar with that stuff, you might have missed it. Okay, um, so pragmatism. Pragmatism I usually put in the middle. Um, Because it just feels feels more uh, like Americans are trying to trying to be concerned with the I. I I'm certainly focus on on my own uh, um, my own flourishing, etc. Right, eudaimonia, as Aristotle called it. I put him over here. And then over here we have, I think Hume is a perfect example, we're also worried about the community. So I'm trying to do what's best for me and the community. I'm not you know, going to do just one or the other. And there's certainly some things that I'm certain about. You know, this is a magic marker. You know, it says Expo on it. That was one of the questions in today's crossword puzzle, the New York Times crossword puzzle. Expo was the answer, um, et cetera. And, and this is where we're born, so this is birth for me. We kind of travel this way in a normal American environment. We're kind of pulled down by high school especially, where we're moved towards uncertainty because science is considered, you know, funeral by funeral. That's how science progress progresses, right? come up with a great idea. Ah, okay, everybody's using this idea. Oh, we found something wrong with it. So, funeral, and then we have a new idea, which is better than the last one. So that's you know the idea of how, how science progresses. So you end up with a problem with a, uh, what is true in pragmatism? Well, I mean, certainly some things don't change uh, constantly, but there are other things that do change, and John Dewey tried to fix that by coming up with the term called a warranted assertion. For now, this seems to be the right answer. Pending future investigations, you know, we might, you know, might might change our mind. Um, we, we talked about Charles Sanders' purse. Um, William James. William James really was the one who popularized uh, um, pragmatism. They, at the time, they didn't have radios, they didn't have TVs. Uh, what they did have were uh, concerts and lectures. And so lots of people would go to the local theaters to hear a lecture. And so you'd have someone like Josiah Royce or William James giving a lecture to a couple thousand people. And they were very popular. Um, and there were a couple others out there. Uh, John Dewey called his version of pragmatism 
instrumentalism. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. No one uses it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the idea was that uh, knowledge is an instrument. It's a tool, right? So instrumentalism. Um, let me get to, uh, so John Dewey was born in 1859, died in 1952. He was born in Burlington, Vermont, which if you've ever been up there, it's a small little place, hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Kind of interesting. Uh, the neat thing uh, for me was Middlebury College is there. And so I spent a summer there because I went to Middlebury College for a summer. Re refreshing my Russian language skills. Middlebury is primarily a language school. Pardon? Lots of frogs. Lots of frogs? Lots of frogs. Lots of frogs. Lots of frogs. You mean French people? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the French people are often called frogs. I asked my grandfather that because he was in World War I and he said because they ate frogs legs oh. they called them frogs that was but you meant you meant the little green things I never saw any frogs in language class so <laughs> <laughs> dissecting the frog. That's my, my wife hated biology because she had to dissect a frog. And in my biology class, we or a fetal pig. pig. We also had fetal oh, pig. Yeah, we had to dissect well, the cat. Well, I had to dissect the cat too. Yeah, that was terrifying. My 16 year old self should never have done that. My my um, my anatomy teacher put on circle of life as we did it. We watched a, Aristocrats <laughs> or Aristocats. Sorry, I'm sorry. You watched a movie about cats. Yeah, while cutting open a cat. Yeah, and you were 16. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Well, science teachers are very, are very. Much that class like, was traumatizing. Oh, I think they're I would like that teacher. They're, no, they're trying to mess with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody that was put on lying chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, University of Michigan, oh, oh, oh before that, first, he, and so he, he's really young, goes to the University of Vermont with his brothers, it was like a bunch of Deweys, and they all went together, even though he was the youngest, uh, but he did fine, uh, ended up really liking philosophy, although he spent a few years teaching before he decided to continue on with his own education, but eventually he did... Uh, decided to go on and he went to John Hopkins which was a brand new university um, down in Maryland uh, and by the way um, I think I already mentioned that that's where Charles Sanders Peirce was teaching logic and so he ended up meeting and learning from Charles Sanders Peirce John Dewey did while he was there um, remember Charles Sanders Peirce ended up being fired because he dated a divorced woman yeah. scandalous in any case, you know, um, John Dewey ended up getting his PhD. He wanted to be a philosopher, a philosophy professor, uh, and his advisor said, "Don't do that. You're you're not going to get a job if you become a, a philosophy professor, unless you're also a priest or a theologian, because all the schools that will hire you will only hire you in, in the United States if you're really a, a minister." Uh, as well. Uh, and quite a few of the professors I had were, were ministers, by the way. Um, uh, um, one was a Presbyterian, one was an Episcopalian. Um, uh, the Greek teacher was also uh, Episcopalian. But in any case, um, uh, he got his PhD and was not a theologian and did get a job right away in the University of Michigan. And he was there for about 10 years, although he spent one year uh, in the University of Minnesota. Um, and then from there, he went on to um, Chicago, the University of Chicago, where he developed a school 
which was called the laboratory. You're familiar? That's not it then. I might not be able to find this anymore. Hmm. Is that the same one I was cl I clicked on? Well, I guess I'm not gonna find it. This isn't it. Let's have a little conversation that doesn't necessarily have to take place, but it well, I don't know if I'm no, I should have looked for it because you know the internet changes, I guess. Wait a minute, what was this down here? To parent teacher meetings go many of the wilderness. Now hold on, Miss Fox. It's all very well to teach my boy to paint pretty pictures from Bill Bird out. He doesn't even know his multiplication table. For generations, U.S. youngsters went to school because they had to. And both communities boasted but one room and a single teacher with which to educate their entire and assorted cousins. Good morning, children. Good morning, children. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Please keep the right down and sweet time. Johnny learned his multiplication tables as his father and grandfather had before him through endless classroom drills. Yes. Two nine six five. Three nine six eight. By the same process, he learned the key dates of history and the impossible to spell words. And the other. Oh. The real formula was simple, if monotonous. And Johnny Fox was more apt to measure the strength of his memory than his understanding. <laughs> Happiest moment for the school children of that sterner era was when school let out. But for some youngsters, staying after school seemed almost unavoidable. That's what they used to call the Board of Education. At Columbia University is one of the men responsible for the spread of today's revolutionary teaching ideas. Professor William Burns Kilpatrick. We are trying to let the child learn to face actuality. And on this basis, build his idea, his character, his sense of self-reliance, of how to live and work with others. In a word, we are equipping the child to face his future by learning to face intelligently his immediate present. Yesterday, found only in a half dozen advanced experimental schools. Today, in tens of thousands of public schools, from Santa Monica, California, to Bronxville, New York, progressive education is informed. Learning by doing, learning about practical everyday problems, perhaps a traffic problem, and practical teaching. A child can dictate what he sees before he can read about it in a book. <laughs> There are ways of making spelling and reading fun. One lovely Saturday morning, all the cats under the bush get up and borrow each other and he's lying to the mouth and have an egg. And he rolled out some nice little cakes. And he's going to eat cake with some of the poverty to get back from the old country. Can you nice little cakes to bowl and sit out the front instead of bed? Important device of progressive education is the project. For first graders, one day it may be a lunch project. 
first step for these tiniest moppets involves breeding, as individuals are assigned to get the various items of food. Buying at the store involves arithmetic and the practical knowledge of money. Then comes the serious business for Muppets of cooperating with each other in preparing mud. This youngster is learning that butter is made from cream. He knew that cream came from a cow. From this one day's project in actually handling food, may spring another day's discussion or a further project, perhaps 